Hello, I'm Jonathan Simon with the Google Cloud Platform team. I'm going to show you a demo of using Compute Engine to set up a simple cloud-based web server. That way you can see the process and then try it out for yourself. Let's get started by pointing a browser to cloud.google.com. Click the My Console link to view the developer's console. Now that we're in the console, we'll create a new project. We're creating a test web server, so we'll call it Web Server Project. We'll also change the suggested project ID. Agree to the terms of service, and then click Create. That'll start the project creation process. Now the project that's being created will have access to all of Google's Cloud Platform services. Compute Engine is a paid service, so the first thing we'll need to do is set up our billing information. You'll likely be surprised at how affordable experimenting with Compute Engine can be. After we've entered our billing information, we'll navigate to the Compute Engine VM Instances page, where we should see a list of the virtual machines that we've created. We don't currently have any, so let's add one. Start by clicking the Create Instance button. We'll specify the name as Test Web Server. For the zone, we'll create our instance in US Central 1F. For the machine type, since this is a test, we'll select the smallest one available, the F1 Micro, with just over half a gigabyte of memory. And we'll go with the suggested default image, which is Debian. Next, click the Allow HTTP Traffic checkbox, since this VM is going to be a web server. All the other settings should be okay for our purposes, so we can now click the Create button to create the virtual machine. Note that because we went with the default settings, a 10 gigabyte persistent disk will be created named Test Web Server that will be used as the boot disk for the instance. Persistent disks are especially useful because they can live on beyond a specific virtual machine's lifetime. This allows you to save the state of your virtual machine at any point in time and then restore it at any time in the future. Our instance is almost ready. Some final health checks are being run, which is the last step before the server is ready to use. There, now our instance has been created. In order to make changes like installing software on our Compute Engine virtual machine, we'll need to remotely access the machine. There's a quick way to do that right from the Instance Details page. Next to the VM's details, there's an SSH link. Clicking that link will open a new browser tab that contains a secure shell into the VM instance. And there we go, we've remotely accessed our test web server. Here we are at the command line. Well, let's install some software, specifically some web server software. The web server software we're going to install is Apache Web Server. A standard command used on Linux to install software is apt-git. So we're going to type sudo to run the command as super user apt-git install apache2. It's going to ask us to confirm that we want to install it. Hit Y and press enter. The installation process has started. And now Apache has been installed. As part of the installation process, Apache creates a default web page. We can try loading that default web page in a browser to confirm that we're actually serving web pages. Back in the developer's console, we can easily do this by clicking the external IP address of the VM instance. And there we go, the default Apache web page. Great, our test web server is serving up web pages. Now, to prove that this is our web server, let's modify the default web page. We'll jump back over to our SSH tab and type the following command to open up our default web page in an editor. We'll start by typing sudo to run the command as superuser, nano, which is the text editor we'll use, 
and then the location of the default web page, which is var www.index.html. When we run that, it opens the web page in an editor. First, we'll remove the default text that's there. And then we'll paste in an image so we can easily tell that the page has been modified. We'll save the page in Nano by pressing the Control key and X, and then Y and Enter to close and save the file. Back in the browser, we should be able to refresh the page. And there's our new custom default web page. Now I would call this test a success. The final thing we need to do to wrap up our test is to delete the virtual machine and the persistent disk. As I do that, let's make a calculation about how much this whole test costs. We'll select our test web server and click the delete button to delete the VM and its persistent disk. Click the delete button again to confirm. The deletion process has started. So how much did it cost to run this demo? The current virtual machine price for the type we used is 0.8 cents per hour. Compute Engine VM instances are billed at a minimum of 10 minutes and we ran our server for less than that, so our virtual machine usage cost comes in at under two-tenths of one cent. The persistent disk pricing is four cents per gigabyte per month, so that comes to well under a cent for the default 10 gigabyte boot disk that we used. So, everything we just did on Compute Engine for less than one cent. And there we go, the virtual machine and its persistent disk have been deleted. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. Go try creating your own cloud-based web server on Compute Engine.